Okay, cool. So we're going to talk twin flames today, peeps. So thank you to everyone there that has come along to watch this today. Um, the whole point is um, both myself and Sarah are twin flames and there is a huge amount of stuff that circulates on the internet time and time again, which both of us kind of feel like it stops you in your journey and it stops you working on you. So anyways, um, I've known Sarah for a few months now um and i asked her if she would love to come along and have like a coffee and a chat and kind of talk twin flames so um let's see where we go with this because this is purely intuitive and i love a bit of intuitive guidance so um first off sarah ellen you are a tarot reader is that correct yes i am i'm an intuitive tarot reader i do a bit of other stuff as well but predominantly that's what i'm going with at the moment because it feels like my purpose so um that's what i'm embracing right now and Kel, I met you through the universe, lining our paths up so perfectly. And it was just a beautiful thing, wasn't it? And don't you feel like when we, when we look at our twin flame journey, we're just given the right people at the right time? Oh, I absolutely, totally, 100% agree. I mean, like manifestation, when you get so far on your journey, is instantaneous. And I also wanted just to speak a little bit about why people feel in pain in the journey. Um, I really want to make sure we cover that today because there are a lot of twin flames I know that are really struggling, they're really suffering. And yet, if you personally ask me, what's my twin flame journey been like? I would say to you, it's been one of the most beautiful experiences of my life. I am truly blessed and thankful to be a twin flame. However, I don't scream and shout about it from the rooftops. So could I just start with you, Sarah, just a little bit, if it's all right, my lovely, um, just around, could you give us a little bit of sort of back information about Twin Flames, about your journey, just a, a short brief one, just so the people watching have got a kind of a, an understanding of where and how you are a Twin Flame. Over to you, Sarah. Thank you. Okay, so very briefly, because it's a very long story. Um, I met my twin in 2018 and I did not know he was my twin until 2019, almost a year to the day late, uh, later that we had parted ways. Um, so yeah, my, my life in 2018 took an, a massive hit. I had the most enormous spiritual shift, uh, was thrown into a dark night of the soul and um, that lasted for a year. And then I found out that he was my twin. Um, how I found that out was working intuitively. Um, he kept showing up for me in a lot of ways and I was in a lot of pain over trying to get over him. Um, he had only been in my life very briefly so I couldn't understand why I was so, what I felt was attached and obsessed. Um, so I did some intuitive work and one night before I went to sleep, I just sat with my hand and my heart and I just asked, please give me clarity. Why does this person keep showing up in my life? No matter how much work I do on myself in healing, why does he keep showing back up? Um, and I had only at that point used YouTube for meditation purposes. Um, and I woke up the next morning to a notification from a tarot reader um, talking about your DM has woken up. So there I fell down a huge rabbit hole, which lasted about six months. Um, I managed to claw my way out of that. Um, and I'm sure we'll touch on this in a moment about the codependency that can develop when you first discover this journey and that you are part of it. Um, and yeah, I clawed my way back out and started to focus more on me rather than looking on the external. I started to work on my inner world and um, so since then, that's where I've been going, doing my healing, looking at my divine masculine energy, my divine feminine energy and balancing and harmonizing those within. Um, and that's currently where I'm working at the moment is uh, in healing and working my purpose, which is being a tarot reader, being intuitive, being in a, a channeler for other people to bring messages of truth, uh, love, guidance and healing to their world. because. We know that, that that is something that is so needed right now. Awesome. So you but you've actually physically met your twin, haven't you? Yes, I have. And it was a beautiful experience, but also very painful. So, uh, yeah, um, he was only in my life physically for two weeks. Um, we were still in contact for about a year and a half afterwards. And we are now no longer in contact. Um, but that's okay because we're both working our own pathway and 
yeah, I'm absolutely whole, content and complete in that perfect state. <laughs> Excellent. OK, cool. So kind of like um, having met your twin in the physical, because there are quite a lot of people that are looking for the twin flame. Um, I've noticed that um, on several posts that because it's just funny, it pops up for me all the time. Um, mm. So I've got to say, you know, one of the things I just want to quickly say, no matter how much you try and get off the journey, in my opinion, um, it's just not possible uh, because you'll be bombarded with synchronicity. You'll see everything related to your twin. And for me personally, um, I have tried to leave a journey on several occasions. But um, I think the biggest point there has to be kind of like around surrender and things like that. And that's what's, I suppose, one of the hardest things about the whole journey, if I'm really honest, is accepting that it's all about you. So when did you kind of realise that the journey was actually about you and you alone and not about your twin? Because I just want to touch on that a little bit, because I know quite a few people in the community that are doing the work because it will lead me back to my twin. So at what point did you, because it just touched on the obsession, at what point did you realise that it's about you and not about your twin? Could you share that with us, please? Yeah, sure. Um, I suppose, really, I had done quite a lot of work, like I say, already. I had been sort of skirting around the uh, community and not really taking part, if that makes sense. Um, I found it quite toxic, if I'm honest. Um, I felt like there was a lot of um, there's a lot of material out there that keeps you hooked on the material. And for me, that's really what started sending the red flags up was that this there's this constant taglines of uh, union is coming. Um, your DM has walked away. Um, separation is uh, is ending. Things like that, uh, and I just felt like all of this is in the future tense. And and actually, if you're looking at law of attraction and how your vibration reflects on your outer world from your inner world, it, all of these things just started to to give me little question marks around what I was actually focusing on. So. Um, I really felt like if I wanted to um, be in a good place, I had to work on me for sure. And I can't keep focusing on someone else who I have absolutely no effect on. Do you see what I mean? In my mind. So how I felt about it was, was that I just didn't want to be dependent on the external. I wanted to feel good within. Um, so I just wanted to work on me. And that really took me to a place of thinking about where I was focusing my attention. And if I'm constantly looking at someone else who I'm feeling their absence, where's that leaving me? It's in a place of lack, isn't it? And in a place of, of longing and I didn't want to be there. So I guess I just, I think it was really in the middle of the first lockdown that I had to take a good look at where my life was like so many people, right? Because we were taken out of our normal routines and our normal circumstances and we had to sit with ourselves and kind of get to know who we are um, and that's what I did and just from sort of reflecting on the things that I was coming across within the twin flame community I just felt the stagnation and the self-sabotage and all of those things that just didn't feel good so I decided to flip it and just work on me and that's where I discovered self-mastery and that's really what I've been focused on ever since because I want to be able to feel the peace the love the compassion the union within and that's where I've been aiming my my focus ever since so can I ask you Kel, uh, Kel sorry on, well, yeah no, that's fine <laughs> that's fine I'm carry on I yeah, need to on. take a sip of tea just one moment okay oh I love the I uh, love the friends cup yeah I've stolen this it's not mine it's my daughter's but I just felt like it bit my hand better than hers she's tiny and I just like a big mug of tea <laughs> I love that <laughs> Go on, carry on then, Sarah. Uh, yeah, so what I wanted to ask you was, um, when did you realise that you were a twin? Because on my level, I didn't know. I had no idea about the twin flame journey. I just knew that I could not get this guy out of my mind or out of my heart. And I'd had such a deeply intensely experience with him. You know, I've been married. You know, I've got children and you know, I've had a life with someone and this guy came in and turned my world upside down and then disappeared. Um, and I just couldn't, that experience changed my life. 
whereas I didn't feel as intensely about other stuff. So how did that come about for you? When did you know you were on the twin flame journey? Oh, so me, just really quickly, um, it was a notification on Google about six weeks after my twin ghosted and blocked me. Um, and I literally, probably like you, if I'm really honest, I just, I was just like, why can I not stop thinking about her? Like, and it was really painful, obviously, because, you know, when they do ghost you and block you, I mean, you're not ghosted or blocked, are you? I mean, I've, I've been blocked. I think I'm on my third block at the moment. I'm just, it's life in it, really. You get used to being blocked, if I'm fair. Um, but just on blocking, just to touch on that just quickly, from my perspective, they're doing their healing, leave them alone. Yeah. Um, and for me, yeah, purely, uh, I saw it on Google and it just said, you know, like you used to have the little notifications. It just said, twin flames, what are these? And I was like, ooh. Well, anyhow, there was my rabbit hole completely. Um, and like you and probably most people watching, if you are a twin flame, I got so sucked into the hole. Honestly, like I, I really am honest about this. I spent probably three weeks watching tarot reading after tarot reading. Your DM is doing this. Your DM is doing that. And then I started also, I'll be really honest, because this is obsession. Um, and I've also looked at limerence around that, by the way. But um, the obsession, I even crossed watched my twin flames tar uh, horoscope. Um, on tarot reading so I would watch my horoscope okay and then I would also watch my twins and I used to go around all these tarot readers um, and then one day after about three weeks if I'm really honest right I was like care what you're doing get a grip I was just like what 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 are you doing and um and then for me then I just kind of tried to understand the journey because I've got to say, and I think we've said this before to each other, when I found out the 144,000, I really did think, God selected me. God chose me. Out of all the billions and millions of people on the planet, God picked hell. Okay, whatever. It is what it is, okay. And I did actually, if I'm really honest, make several videos on my old page as Kel Transmedium around my journey. But um, yeah, mine was purely um, completely by accident. Um, I had no idea. But then it made sense it really yeah I was just like is that what I am but then like you I did self-mastery and I started doing that inner work and actually one of the things just to touch on there is inner child for me um I believe is so paramount and so massive um when it comes to the twin flame journey would you agree your inner child is one of the biggest things to have a look at around the twin flame journey there yeah, I would. And the reason for that is because I really feel that what the twin flame journey does when you first discover that you are part of it is it brings up your deep core wounds. Um, for me, I definitely felt that stuff that I had experienced in childhood reared its head in a way that made me feel so completely ungrounded and lost and vulnerable that I had no choice but to look at it. And I think as well, it was uh, one of those things where it's it's a case of you can't ignore it. And it's like, when you become aware of something, you can't become unaware. You have to go, you either go into one two, of two states, you go into embracing what you need to do around that, or you go into denial. And for me, I did go into den denial at first, for sure. I took cover and I hid, I felt like I was grieving. So I literally, went into hermit mode and got under a blanket and didn't really want to communicate with anybody and I certainly didn't feel like I could talk about what had happened um, because it was triggering so much of my inner child and I just wanted to hide and not be um, I didn't want to be seen because I didn't want anything else hurting me got so you. would you say would you say that that kind of happened for you as well in a similar vein in a child for me um, if I'm really honest um, I was already on the inner child uh, journey when I met my twin and actually um, it was my twin and I remember looking into her eyes and thinking oh my god you are so damaged you are so destroyed you are so vulnerable and hurt um, and she turned around and said to me that the reason why she couldn't be with me is she wasn't good enough for me well, that's inner child completely um, and I think she ghosted me the day after 
um, I'd started my inner child EFT therapy. Inner child for me has been absolutely huge and massive. And I now have a really happy, beautiful LK. Um, and every day is bouncy. Every day is amazing. And every day is incredible. So any of you stuck on there and thinking, oh, you know, what do I do on my twin flame journey? Do the words inner child really resonate with you? Um, because for me, that certainly is the power dynamic between myself and my twin flame is she's got she did have an absolutely destroyed inner child even though she never had an abusive upbringing she had a really poor inner child um and obviously so did I and then us coming together was the mirror we saw each other and it was just I couldn't handle her pain she couldn't handle mine um and then that's when I don't know it just kind of it kind of happened after the spiritual awakening. I was like, I need to heal me. I need to do me. I can't keep thinking about her. She's got her stuff to do. And there's so many people out there that are looping. Now, I want to just quickly cover that, okay, the loop. Have you been on the loop where you're like, you feel and then you go back around again and then you're back around again? Have you been on the loop at all? We've never spoke about that actually as friends, have we? Yeah, no, we haven't. But no, I've definitely felt that. I, and I can I can remember times where I was so fed up with it all that I literally had like a little mini meltdown, chucked my toys out of the pram and went, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. But like you've said, it comes back. So, you know, it doesn't matter how many times you turn around and say, yep, that's not for me. I've done the cord cutting. I've done the energetic like release, sending the energy back, shielding, shielding, you know, trying to remove myself. But it just keeps coming back. And and ultimately, it's, you know, when it comes back, because you've done stuff like that, it can feel even more painful. Like I can remember how much pain I was in when it all went down and I had no clue I was even a twin. You know, a whole year of not knowing. I was just like, what is this? You know, so it was it was difficult from that perspective. I remember feeling like this isn't for me. I don't want to do it, blah, blah, blah. But then it would come back and I would sit there thinking to myself, why am I having to feel this over and over again? So sooner or later, I had to surrender. <laughs> yeah. Go, okay, there isn't a way out of this. So I'm going to have to work through the stages of the healing that is required to be able to make any kind of progress and bring any kind of peace in and healing. And, and healing is so important. And, you know, when we're doing the work, then we know that the, our twin is doing the work also. And what we heal in us is healing in them. So I feel that very deeply because like you I had a similar experience with my twin now what went down between us was the it was the abandonment and the not feeling worthy so um he even said to me it was so difficult not to accept the love that was oozing from you and I thought listen to those words it was so difficult not to accept it that what does that tell you about where he's at he doesn't see himself as worthy of that, you know, and I just I felt that really deeply because ultimately worthiness and feeling unlovable has been my biggest, biggest issue to heal. So it's just so interesting how it shows up, because for me, that wasn't typical. That wasn't the typical way that abandonment or unworthiness would necessarily be expressed. But it was it was nonetheless incredibly powerful. Yeah, I can I can totally relate to that. Um, like I said, my twin flame telling me that, um, you know, she's not good enough for me. And honestly, like how I didn't know we were twins is just unbelievable. Like <laughs> I've got I, I well, until recently, I did have all the conversation history um, and I read through it. I don't know, probably uh, probably a good year ago. I read through it. No, a bit longer than a bit, bit less than that, actually. But um, I read through it and I was just like, crikey, there is there your mirror your perfect mirror like I didn't think I was worthy of her she didn't think she was worthy of me and um but one of the things that my twin did say to me which is kind of similar to what your twin said was um she just said before you I had my head down and I've been plodding along and I've just been existing for 17 years she goes and there comes you just shining a massive light in my eyes and she goes for the first time ever you make me feel like me and actually my twin did say to me that I scare the SHIT out of her um, and she's never felt this way never felt so exposed so vulnerable um, but I'm her home and 
I mean, I'm sure any twin flames out there, you know, you can relate to that feeling of, you know, being one, being two and being your home. But I think for me, if I'm really honest, Sarah, um, I found home within myself. And I think that's one of the biggest achievements. Um, and I just just really kind of wanted just to sort of ask you a, a couple of things just around, you know, there's a lot of um, people out there that are just like, I want reunion with my twin. I want union with my twin. To any of those people out there, what would you say? Because that can be a big, this is what I'm working for. This is my everything. So I know some twins out there that are just like, oh my God, that's all I can think about is union and reunion. Um, what would you say to those people that might be watching this just around the whole doing it for union, doing it for reunion? What would you say to those people? Ooh, you put me on the spot with the big one. <laughs> so how I feel about it is this. Um, like you say, there is that feeling that you are home when you connect with your twin. Um, I feel like I'm not going to call it a mistake because I don't believe in mistakes. I feel like missteps or little going off track or whatever. We're always encountering exactly what we're supposed to at any given point. Everything happens perfectly. And I don't believe otherwise. Um, everything happens for us so that we can move, keep moving on our journey. Um, how I feel about union and reunion. First of all, building our home in someone else that's going to leave us feeling homeless right because mm -hmm. if that person or that energy goes then where are we left um and I don't want to feel homeless so I want my home to be here my home is inside me in my heart space and everything that I do is to make that home beautiful um how I feel about reunion I just don't focus on it I don't because it doesn't it doesn't make sense to look outside of myself for that I've worked on my divine masculine and my divine feminine, and that's what I do, me, that what, which I carry within me is what I work on. Um, people that are being given that, that sort of goal of union or reunion, however you want to frame it, again, you have to feel into that. How does that feel to you? Does it feel like that's something that's outside of you? And ask why, you know, ask yourself, why is it outside? Because again, everything starts from within and you have everything within you to be able to feel whole, content and complete. Um, union isn't something I focus on. I don't, I don't structure my healing around that. I structure my healing around me and yeah. everything that has been shown to me. And you know what I am grateful I'm grateful to him for showing up when he did, putting a bomb under my life. <laughs> but everything that he exposed to me that was in me, you know, everything that he showed me, the things that he said, you know, telling me that I had brought everything that was missing and then leaving, you know, it really exposed to me where I wasn't able to see myself in a loving way, how I wasn't showing up for myself how I was ghosting myself, how I was leaving me, how I was abandoning me, and that I wasn't able to love myself in that way, to show up for myself and be my biggest cheerleader, my own loving partner. You know, I know people bandy that term self-partnering partnering around and it's become a bit of a trend. But honestly, feel into that term. What it means is I can take myself anywhere, I can do anything, and I don't feel the absence of and that's what's important to me is to feel whole, content, complete. And like I don't have to look externally for any of those things. And don't get me wrong. I don't get it perfect. I don't get it right every time. Stuff comes up constantly because it always does on this journey. And I, I'm grateful for the triggers because they show me another layer and another layer. And I don't believe as um, a soul on a human journey in a physical form that I'm ever going to be done healing. I'm just enjoying the ride and I'm enjoying the experience and my God, what a ride it is. And you know what? I love him where he is. I'm grateful to him. I know he doesn't regret the life he's chosen and I'm staying within my power and loving my life and not regretting the life I've chosen because that's what we're here to come and experience, isn't it? Wow, that's actually really incredibly powerful of you to share that. Um, because like I say, there are a lot of people... Um, 
I mean, I, I come across a lot of people in what I do as a medium um, where people reach out to me and they've been to a card reader um, or they've had a reading and that, that is a loop. That is a loop. OK, um, I mean, personally, me, um, I've had uh, one twin flame reading, uh, which I paid for, which from my term was coming the next month. Well, that was kind of quite correct. Only it was my false twin. I'm going to ask you this, actually. I'm going to just say one of my favourite bits about the journey is I love the winks, I love the nudges, and I love the synchronicity. I do, and I love how I see the word twin everywhere. Um, I'm constantly reminded of my twin. Um, and actually, do you know what? When I see synchronicity, it makes me smile. How do you feel about that, Sarah? I used to, um, I used to hang on to it and I used to look for it constantly. This was when I was very early on in the awareness of where I was, you know, what I was experiencing um, in the obsessional and the limerence kind of phase. Um, so, yeah, that was important to me and I wanted to see them constantly. Then I went through a phase of, no, don't want to see anything, but I would see them because I didn't want to see them. Um, now I'm kind of in that place that I've got a lot of peace around it. I've got to say, he speaks to me through music, songs, um, names, um, <laughs> yeah, various things that, you know, they, they will feel really sort of personal. But, you know, again, it's where you're at vibrationally, isn't it? It's what you're open to. And then it's how you frame it when it shows up. So for me, it's just little nods, winks. And um, I, I like to feel like the, the love from it um and you know what i'm just at peace with it so for those people finding it very difficult really struggling on their twin flame journey and seeing that synchronicity what would you say that you could pass on to maybe help them find a bit of inner peace with that oh okay so uh, there, there are a couple of things I, I would ask you how were you before you discovered you were a twin and what made you happy you know what what lights you up what did you get joy from because that stuff still exists for you because you are you um and I would also say too, have a bit of fun with it because you know you and I know law of attraction is is something that you can really have some fun get playful see what you can actually manifest yourself so you know maybe say okay if you want to talk to me I'd like to talk to you from a tv advert you know, talk to me from that, bring something up, just see how playful you can get with it. Because, you know, we're here to enjoy life. We're not here to suffer all the time. I know we're on a journey of healing and I know there's going to be triggers. But if we can reframe that in terms of saying, you know, thank you for this trigger. What what are you showing me? What is it you're trying to get my attention around? But also then just remembering to still have some fun if you're talking about inner child work what did you do as a kid were you suffering the whole time I mean you know we can all even if we were suffering we could get out into that fantasy world and close our, our suffering out and just get into that you know whether we were off playing with fairies or unicorns or you know whatever we can kind of bring that into our world now and just have a bit of fun with it because ultimately it can feel very serious yeah and that's where the pain can sit and for me dark night of the soul that I've had several of those if I'm honest and I just want just to really quickly touch on that um you might not only have just the one dark night of the soul and for me I think the journey can be very addictive um and there's just it just keeps you in that bubble and keeps you in that loop. But I think one of the greatest freedoms for me, probably the greatest things for me probably has been the um, the self mastery and the freedom I found from it all. And and what I hope for every twin flame watching this is you guys get to feel as amazing and incredible as I do. And also in how beautiful and how blessed Sarah is. I want to say from my experience, um, it's not painful. It's the most beautiful thing I have ever done in my life. And I am forever have the gratitude to be living this journey day in, day out. Um, I just think it's incredible. What would you just touch on there? I would say that the opportunities that come up through this journey are just so, so unique. Um, and I don't, you know, I don't feel like it's something that I necessarily would have chosen prior. You know, if someone had talked to me about Twin Flames, I'd have gone, oh, no, thank you. Um, but in all, all honesty, you know, because I found out afterwards, I kind of felt like, OK, so let's let's see where this goes. And I think the thing is, is that if you can just have that curiosity and you can have that 
like treat it like an adventure because it truly is you know we're given this gift of this adventure and you know within it we've got this mission and this mission is to bring light and love and kindness and compassion and non-judgment to the world and I just want to quickly touch on the stuff that's out there already that is circulating that is toxic addictive and can keep you in the loop I just want to tell you I do not judge that at all if that's where you're at that's where you're at because there's something within there that you need to become aware of so that you can master that right and I think we both agree on that we there are stages to this journey and there are things that you dip in and out of that really teach you something mm -hmm. very important about yourself so at all times I'm always thinking what is it I need to see what is it that I need to know show me easily may I see it easily but, you know, just to really look at this journey as a journey of self-discovery, a journey of self-mastery, love, care, compassion, not just for you, but for others, too. So wherever you are on your journey and whatever you're engaging with, I'm not judging you. I will hold space for you 100 percent because I get it. I do get it. And I get how it feels when you're really high and I get it how it feels when you're really low. Yeah, no, totally. And uh, like I said to you, when I first started speaking to you, um, I don't talk about my journey. I don't I don't talk about it. It's it's private and confidential, considering that in the beginning I used to blurt about it and I used to love being a twin. And like I said, I thought God chose me for a reason, you know, but um, it's certainly not something that I speak about on a, a personal level. And I suppose. I suppose one of the biggest things that comes up for me, uh, um, I think continuously is I just come across the people that are in pain. And obviously for me as a medium, I do also deal a lot with people that have crossed over. Um, so I don't know how this happens. Well, of course I do. It's called the universe. OK, but the universe is always sending twins my way. So I really just wanted just to speak about the karmic. OK, um, that's quite massive and quite huge. Um, and. I don't know about you, Sarah, but I tend to find that the karmic is massively portrayed as a nasty person or a bad thing. Um, well, certainly from the readings that I've seen and that I've had. What would be your take to share with people just around the karmic there, Sarah, please? OK, so isn't it easy to slip into the energy that is given by a reader? I'm just going to say that. So we have to kind of take a position here in remembering that the person that is reading from you will also bring their own energy into that if they're not in a great place so my feeling on the karmic is this i used to think oh my god she's in the way right and i used to have a really negative view of her and then i mean there are i'm not knocking readers because i'm a reader <laughs> I'm not knocking readers um I just think you can get a different kind of angle so if you're if you're uh listening to a reader that's doing their work and doing the healing you'll get a different viewpoint so I heard this thing from a reader and um it was this constant like oh she's leave he's leaving da, 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 whatever you know you know the drill but then she said and I was thinking oh here we go here we go with the bashing the karmic again she said you know what when you think about the karmic partner of your twin flame, really, you should be holding them up in high esteem. And I thought, oh, this is a different angle. I want to hear this. Tell me more. Tell me more. And she said, you know, this person, whatever you have been told about them by your twin, has loved your twin for mm -hmm. however many years, um, has been uh, a soulmate to them, has brought in lessons has probably built a family with them has brought security love compassion and whether they get on or not is neither here nor there because first of all not your damn business um and actually what you should be doing is is looking at them because how much have they loved your twin you're only being given the twins perspective as they want you to hear it and you know they're talking from an unhealed place just like it's mirroring back to you where your healing is is needed so I hold the karmic in high esteem and I do that because she's loved my twin. She's given him a beautiful family. He's had a massive purpose with her and he's had a beautiful experience. No matter what the challenges have been, their soul contracts are their soul contracts, their pathway, their, the, what they agreed to work through. So, yeah, I actually send her love and gratitude because she's there with him. She's loving him where I can't right now or where, you know, that's not 
worked out at this moment. But again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bash her. She's not a barrier for me. She's someone who is actually in, incredibly important. So yeah, I'm just not a karmic basher. I'm afraid I'm one that holds them up and says, "Thank you, thank you, thank you. You've done a beautiful no. job." Do you know what? I've got to agree because my uh, my twin. I don't know if she actually went back to her karmic. I haven't got a clue. I'm all in favour of the karmic. I think actually they're doing a lot of the work for us. Um, and the way I look at it, and I've all, and I and the way I've always viewed what they call separation is preparation. That's what yeah, I've always seen it as. So separation is preparation either for you for reuniting with your twin or it's preparation for you to be with somebody else um, in a conscious relationship. Because I don't really just believe your twin flame is just for you. Uh, like we said earlier, it's an energy. Um, mm -hmm. But if you want to attach that energy to that person, brilliant. However, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people who thought they knew their twin flame and then they met their real twin flame. I'm going to just throw that out there because I know five people that swore would have given you a million quid. That, that was their twin flame. But what I'm also going to say is, um, and I think this is quite important to cover, nobody knows if anyone is your twin flame. Only you. Do you agree with that? Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. And I just think that, you know, again, if you're looking outside of yourself for validation, that's showing you where you're not meeting yourself internally on a on a an inside level so yeah uh, these things are coming along to trigger us aren't they to show us something so yeah if you're looking externally for validation and for that love then 100 percent go within <laughs> I, I would just say because um i've known people um come to me personally for reading is that my twin flame i will never ever give you that validation um and i don't believe you would either sarah if i'm honest because to me the only person who does know is you been absolutely amazing talking to you today uh, around twin flames and stuff um what would be any kind of like final words and things that you'd like to say to anybody on the twin flame journey going through anything um what sort of stuff comes up for you that you just want to share in your final thoughts there today um first of all you're not alone um secondly the the twin flame community can be a minefield um i feel like you know the right people will show up for you at the right time. I feel like we've shown up for you at the right time and we'd love to assist and hold space and just bring some compassion and self-love. I have to say, I do think we get it. Okay, I'm not just going to say that, but I think with both two and a half years on the journey, um, I don't think there's anything else that could pop up that wouldn't even surprise me. Um, I think I've seen probably like you, probably every reunion video out there, anyone watching it, okay? I've seen every union video from every person in the universe, I think. Um, anyways, I guess um, just to finish then, my lovely, I'm going to say um, we are holding a workshop together. Uh, we're going to talk more around twin flames we're going to look at um, several concepts um, that will go out on my page um, in the next couple of days um, you're going to share the event as well um, the cost will be 14.99 um, and we're going to touch on some really good stuff particularly around divine feminine divine masculine um, we're going to look at also the false twin flame we're going to look at uh, self-mastery um, and how we can help you on your journey just that little bit more um so if you kind of feel drawn and you've enjoyed this um let us know in the comments we'd love to know what you think um if you do want to reach out to sarah um you can over at uh, jupiter sun healing you can reach out to you for a personal reading should they want as well yeah yeah absolutely and i just want to touch on um i do do twin flame readings but i don't do them in the way a lot of readers do because i'm working on how I can assist you in your self mastery rather than a you versus them. So if you're looking for that kind of reading, I'm not that person. Um, so just to get that out there, but I do read, I do read personally and I can tailor readings to um, your requirements. So but I will I, say I, I, what you need will show up, not what you want. <laughs> I can honestly say that actually, I have had a reading from Sarah uh, and it wasn't what I expected whatsoever at all, but it certainly has helped. Uh, guide me on my career uh, options that I went to with. So anyways, with that, Sarah, I think it's been absolutely amazing and incredible speaking to you today. Um, thank you so very much for your time. Um, and uh, sure, I'm looking forward to the workshop with you. Um, so thank you very much. Um, and you take care, my lovely. And it's been absolutely beautiful to spend some time with you. To all of you watching, thank you for taking some time out of your day um, just to listen to us talk around Twin Flames. If you want to reach out to either of us, contact details just above this post or below, depends where you're viewing it. 
um and just thank you from both of us there we go take care cheers guys thank you Bye. Bye. Bye.